we continue to consider on today's Fixing the Money Thing. But I'll tell you what, freedom is better than bondage any day. Being happy and not depressed is better any day. Being full of the joy of the Lord is better any day. And God wants you free. Gary concludes his teaching on overcoming today's culture and securing your future. Consider your freedom today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years we lived in a chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, I want my people free. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life, defeated his debt, and set him free. You'll never find your destiny until you fix the money thing. Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. We are continuing our discussion from yesterday about the deception that the enemy wants you to believe and how it comes to pass. You know, we travel quite a bit. We're in a lot of places, churches and things. And Drenda, we have seen an increase of demonic oppression mm -hmm. like I've never seen before in yes. ministry. Yes, manifestations and services. But the good news is we've also got the opportunity to do what the Bible says, Amen. to cast out devils, right. to uh, speak to those, uh, uh, take authority of those spirits that's and absolutely. take authority of what they're doing to people and see them set free. Oh, that's an amazing. And that's even amazing. in our own services in church, uh, uh, seeing the convicting power of God, uh, these things manifest, but then we deal with them. We're able to take authority yeah, and then see the person come back free. Mark 16, that's part of our assignment, yes. cast out demons. But I want to tell you one story, just to kind of set the stage for a message we're going to go to in a minute. Uh, after one service, this young lady walks up to us, uh, to me, and handed me a card, our, our visitor card, and it was folded over. And she didn't say anything. She handed it to me. I opened it up and said, uh, God told me to come here today. This is her first time here. God told me to come here today. My family is being tormented by demons. And of course, you were there beside me and mm -hmm. started praying for her and the, the demon manifested, or there are demons, there were more than one there, manifested just like the Bible, you know, with screams, foaming oh, at the nice. mouth, wreathing on the floor. And the demon spoke to us, tried to commit, carry on a conversation, which we didn't allow it to do. But I, you know, I realized I'm talking to a living spiritual being that is trying to talk to me, that is holding this woman hostage. It's an alien entity. An alien it has no entity. place there. Yeah. Yes. And, but the, the, the realization of the reality of that is mm -hmm. just staggering. Mm -hmm. And then to see using the authority of the I name think, of Jesus absolutely. Christ, yes. is spending time there, that girl was delivered Absolutely. and set free. Absolutely, she was changed. Afterwards, she had bruises on her face. We didn't touch her, but those spirits were contending and fighting for the she right to be there. A week later, came back to church. Mm -hmm. Free. Now, she was free when she left. She came back, and she brought those photos where she looked like someone beat her. Mm -hmm. We didn't touch her, but those demons, she was wrestling those demons. Mm -hmm. But she, I, I said, it's your first time here. How did you... Come here. How, How did you here? find us? Did, right. God, she, it said, God told me to come here. Mm -hmm. And she had a dream. And in the dream, she saw a picture of a church. She was crying out for help. Yeah, she didn't know God. She didn't but know God. But when we're all desperate, I, that's how I got saved too. Yeah, she was, I said, God, if you're real, you know me. If it's not too late for me, please help me. And that's what she did. That's right. And she, she cried, prayed, out. cried out. And she had a dream. In the dream, she had a picture of a church building. She had no idea where it was. So she asked, uh, she, well, she drew, as soon as she woke up, she, she drew, drew the it. picture that she saw in the dream. And she asked her mother, do you know of any place that looks like this? And her mother had seen our church somewhere. And so she said, this might be it. So she came to church and is set free. I want to put on the screen right now the picture that week she came back. She brought the drawing and gave it to me. She said, you can keep this. And you can see the comparison of our church and the drawing she has, an amazing story. And she brought her children with her. Right. Her children got born again. Then she water baptized with our pastoral team, yes. her children. And then the her husband came to see the baptism. The following week, mm -hmm. he gave his life to Amen. Jesus. And that weekend, I changed. talked to him, yes. and he wasn't quite ready. Yeah, he said he before. thought about it. Yeah. 
I asked him, have you, have you received Jesus as your, as your Savior? And he said, I've thought about it. And, the and I said, the best decision yeah. you'll ever make. Mm -hmm. And uh, the following week, he went ahead and received Jesus yes, as his Savior. And uh, so this is God moving, is just family. like the book of Acts. It is the book. Yeah. We are in the book of yes. Acts. The and Acts hasn't finished yet. That's right. And we also jumped into a taxi cab. Can I add a uh, sure. to that? Absolutely. When she, when that day she was delivered, uh, she wore glasses. She went to put them on and everything is blurry. She realized she was completely healed, didn't need to wear glasses. Her hearing, which was impaired, was completely healed. So this whole family's life has been changed. We have authority over demons and yes. they are more active as the, as the yes. nation makes laws inviting them in and the social media is training people to, to believe what Satan has. Uh, but people are hungry as the taxi cab ride mm -hmm. we had together. Yeah, I think, I'll, I think I'll share that after okay. when we close today. Uh, I want you to get into this teaching. Yeah. It's so powerful. Uh, Gary did a message about how these spirits mm -hmm. operate and how they get into authority, if you will, yeah, how into they people's can get lives. Involved. How they get involved in people's lives. Yeah, and you, you have a scripture that you shared about Well, that. yeah, 1 Timothy 4 says in, in later times, that would be today, of course, that people will abandon the faith, which means abandon what God says, mm -hmm. and follow lying spirits, which means a, a different voice. Like in the Garden of Eden, Satan said, did God really say they're going to come against God's word. And if you don't know God's word, you're open for deception. We talk about this, and this is vital. Uh, people say, what does this have to do with finances? Just about everything. Just about everything. The blessing of God, hearing God, getting business ideas. You've got to stay free, friend. And the enemy does not want you to hear God and to be free and to prosper by the direction of the Holy Spirit. And the culture is pumping this pumping stuff out. Night and, day. and Satan is behind that to lure people into his traps yeah. of sin. Let's go there to that message now. Who are you listening to? What are you feeding on? Are you endangering your destiny, your prosperity, your life? From Faith Life Church in New Albany, Ohio, Gary's life-changing message, Consider Your Freedom, now on Fixing the Money Thing. Over the last few months, as you know, Dren and I travel quite a bit. We have the opportunity to teach and preach uh, conferences and other churches. And uh, over the last few months, we have seen a great increase in demonic activity. Uh, demons manifest in the service, coming out with shrieks and screams or manifestations, people needing deliverance, asking for prayer. And so I began to ask the Lord, you know, what, what is going on? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, for instance, and then again, this is just one of many uh, examples I could give, but uh, the Walking Dead series has been going strong for, and that's a zombie show. You know, it's about dead people, zombies, you know. And uh, been running for 12 years. And the amazing thing is from 18 to 49 year olds, it was the most popular uh, show in the history of TV. Uh, more people watched it than any other broadcast in the history of television. And so 12 seasons, and I think it ended last year, I think. But I found out that they have seven sequels coming out uh, this year and next year. So the Walking Dead, here's a couple titles, Tales from the Walking Dead, Fear of the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, Dead City. I mean, it goes on. Uh, but the word dead is in every title. So it should give you a clue, right? How many have recognized the number of horror movies increasing, especially Halloween? I mean, online, it's these horrible advertisements of these horrible movies. Uh, horror movies are increasing. For an example, in the year 2000, 200 horror movies were filmed, but in 2016, 1,000 were filmed. And so we see a great increase of people having interest in demonic horror movies. A book coming out called The Rise of Devil Worship in the United States by a gentleman, Billy Crone, did a study and found out that 66% of church attenders do not believe there is a real Satan or real demons. That's incredible, church people. A new Pure, a Pew Research study says that witches in the United States now outnumber the Presbyterian membership role. Can't make, can't make this up, this is happening. 
Social media is leading the way, infiltrating into our homes, our society, and into our families' lives with all kinds of perverse things that Satan wants you to feed on. I found out recently a new study that 50% of elementary students carry smartphones. Friend, if you're a parent, please understand that an elementary student does not need a smartphone. They do not need access to the perverse internet, especially at that age. Now, another thing is happening. Pornography is huge. And of course, the internet makes that available anywhere and everywhere. The top porn site, I won't name its name, but the top porn site has more daily visitors than Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined. Friend, a society, a family, a culture cannot survive feeding on this trash. And we need to understand that, that this is a plot against families, against everything righteous that there is. You have to know what God says. In this hour, it's life and death. It's always been life and death, but it happens faster now. Everything's sped up. So much trash hitting you right and left. I say, Pastor, how do I handle this then? Okay, how do I get free? How do I discern desire? How do I get rid of the desire? I don't want to do that. I, don't, I have this compulsion. I mean, how do I get free of that? I'm glad you asked. 1 John 1, 9, you better know this scripture. It's life and death for you. You better know it. If we confess, that's the first step. A lot of people don't confess. But when they hear truth, it will illuminate their need to confess. So thank God for that. Okay. If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. So he is our high priest of this new covenant. The Bible says if we have sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our high priest. Notice it does not say ask for forgiveness. So you, 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 you blow it. You do something. You know, you know it's wrong and you blow it. it do not, if you're a believer, you don't, don't ask for forgiveness. It doesn't say that. Forgiveness is a law of the kingdom. It's already in place. What it says is when you confess your sin, you're acknowledging the law. And it says that Jesus, your high priest, is your advocate, is going to what? Be faithful with what? Faithful to do what? And just. What's just means it means administration of law. He has no choice. It is not God choosing to, God already chose to forgive you before you were born. This is a finished work. It is a legal document in heaven. It's done. You're simply taking advantage of it. You're simply confessing, laying claim to that law. Your attorney, if you will, your high priest, is now your advocate with the Father, presenting him with the legal document, essentially, of what he provided for of your cleansing and your forgiveness. Does that make sense? So you receive it by faith. By faith, I'm forgiven. I don't beg for forgiveness. I don't, you know, when you make a mistake, you feel horrible and condemned. Understand God never condemns, he convicts. That condemnation does not come from God. You confess that sin, believe what God says. Jesus is faithful to forgive you of that sin because that's the law, if you confess it. But here's the part you really have to grab hold of. And he will cleanse us or purify us from unrighteousness. Now, by faith, this is the part you really have to grab hold of because this is the cleansing of the compulsion, the guilt, the, 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 the bondage. You're going to believe God to cleanse you. Forgiveness, yes. But it needs to go past that and to cleanse you of that compulsion. Let me say it this way, of that desire. You know, it's interesting in our culture, I don't drink alcohol. Never had an interest in it. I was there and my grandfather died of alcoholism. My dad, the day he died, held a bottle up and said, this is what killed him. It had great impact on my life. But, you know, I've tasted it. It's horrible stuff. I can't, I really have a hard time believing how people can, I don't understand the lure. I can't, I can't figure it out. I think Coke tastes better. But anyway. I mean, I don't, you know, 
I walk into a store which has rows and rows of alcohol, all kinds, and quiet, total peace. There's no noise, there's no voice, nothing. Doesn't move me, no voice, no temptation, no compulsion, nothing, I'm, I'm free. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. It's like walking down the street, somewhere, nothing, zero. Now, if I get close to a, jo a Jolly Pirate donut shop, <laughs> that'll speak to me. <laughs> There's long johns with the vanilla cream and the chocolate icing, just hot off the grill, you hot off the... <laughs> Now, you know, really no difference. It talks to me. I'm sure people here could care less about donuts. But God will remove that compulsion and you'll get stronger and maybe you can have a donut once in a while. But if you have to have 10 of them, you're in idolatry and you're in bondage. And you need to have self-control. The Bible says fruit of the spirit is self-control. God will help you because I wanna be free. I don't want voices yakking at me and talking to me. You want another donut? Think about the donut. Think about the, oh, I know it's almost lunchtime, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it talks to you and you know, that's not freedom. Freedom is peace. I'm free. I'm not tempted. I'm not, this thing's not yakking at me, right? Compulsion. So when it says he cleanses you of unrighteousness, he's going to cleanse you of that compulsion, that desire. So let's say you go out, you mess up. And so you go through John, 1 John 1, 9. And you confess that by faith, even though you feel horrible, you feel guilty, you pay no attention to your emotions because this is a legal issue. You don't have to feel like you own your car. You have the title, right? Someone tries to take it. You don't have to judge your emotions. You pull the title out and say, it's my car. Okay, this is a legal issue. So let's say you do that by faith and in 10 minutes you go out and do the same thing again. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You're going to do the same thing. You say, well, pastor, I just did that. I just did it again. I said, listen, stop that. You have to stand on the word of God because you can't deliver yourself. You would have already done that if you could have. You can't get free yourself. You're trapped, but God will deliver you and you have the word of God, the living and active word of God. And if you will do what the Bible says, you will walk out of that thing. So maybe the first day you have to do it 25 times. You mean 25? Yeah, every time you take a bite of that donut and you set it down and you keep looking at it, the first off, get, get it out of sight. Cleanse your house. Get stuff away from you so you can walk free. But let's say that you do fall into that trap again 25 times. Or maybe the next day it'd be 10 times. And the next day it'd be five times. See, if you will stay on the word of God and you, by faith, your, your emotions will go nuts. Forget your emotions. This is a legal issue. That is one of the biggest things you've got to learn. It has no bearing on your emotions at all. It's a legal issue. You can say it in tears. You can say it however. You can say, this is my, my legal right. I confess by the word of God, I am free from that compulsion. That desire does not move me. I am not led by that desire. It has no control over me. In the name of Jesus, I am free of that thing. And you believe it, you say it. And you go out and do it again, you say it all over again. Say it all over again. This is how you get free of habits, how you change your life. That's how it works. You need to be free. The enemy will set things in front of you, but you don't have to go down the street where she lives. You don't have to go into the Jolly Pirate donut shop where you have the smells and the pictures and other people eating the donuts. You know and you should know there are certain places that you really don't need to be. The Holy Spirit will help you. But I tell you what, freedom is better than bondage any day. Being happy and not depressed is better any day. Being full of the joy of the Lord is better any day. And God wants you free.
He wants you able to hear his voice, be led in life by his voice. So you have to learn to submit to God. Trust him. He wants to help you be free. He's got a greater life than that donut, trust me. Let me say it again. There's a greater future for you than that donut. So when God gives us his truth, it's for your freedom. And I'm telling you, freedom is so much better than pizza <laughs> or donuts or whatever it is, alcohol, whatever it is. I'm telling you, freedom. Jesus will set you free. He'll set you free. I'm telling you, he'll set you free. I know the enemy's lied to you all these years and said, you can never, you'll never do that. You'll never do that. You'll never do that. You can't do that. You can't. That's a lie. You can do all things in Christ who strengthens you. Your life can change. But let me ask you, what are you putting up with? Why are you putting up with it? Why are you putting up with it? Don't go down that road. Make a decision for freedom. An important message. Absolutely an important message to pay heed to. Dorinda, you mentioned the taxi cab uh, ride we had over in London. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, one thing about the darkness and light, it is growing vastly so clear, yeah. the two differences. And so we jumped into a taxi cab in London, driving from the hotel to the airport. It was almost an hour drive. Mm. And the couple that was in the taxi cab with us, I put a little nugget out there and uh, about something in the culture, and he jumped right on it. And what I found out is they recognize the evil that's going on. They see, you know, we talk about the culture and the different areas the enemies try to set up camp and occupy uh, that Gary's trying to help us instead to occupy. Yes. Uh, you know, he knows about that. So he starts talking and then he says, with all this evil, there has to be good. And I said, and a God that loves you. And he was like, well, if there's a God that loves us and cares about us, why is he letting this happen? So Gary went on to teach mm -hmm. him about jurisdiction. Then he says to Gary, he goes, you taught me more in this ride than I've heard my whole Roman Catholic upbringing. And uh, then he said, I've gotten into the psychic area because I'm trying to figure out how to get to this good. Well, then I kind of took that from there and started talking to him about Jesus, about the road to Father and how we receive Jesus as our Savior and asked, invited them to get born again. And they did. They received Jesus. They repeated the prayer. The taxi cab, cab driver was driving super yeah, slow, slowed way looking down. in the rear view mirror, to make sure we had smiling time. at Gary, watching the whole thing go <laughs> down. And we had this yeah. opportunity. They were delivered and freed. Yeah, were, and so he began happy. to weep and weep. And he kept saying, I don't know why I'm crying. I said, I do. And then I was able to prophetic speak over him and his, his uh, fiance. And uh, anyway, we saw them in this one drive because they see there's evil. This is an opportunity because there is gross darkness trying to cover the earth. People know things are not right. And when they know things aren't right, we're able, you're able to speak into their life and say, there is a God. And the only way out of this evil is to become a believer in his kingdom, to come out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom yes. of God's son. And deliverance Amen. happens. Freedom happens. People get born again. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, and so we, we were thrilled. At the end, they were taking your hey, website. The and our, harvest everything fields they, are and right. They're like, we're going to yes. follow you. We're like, yes, follow us as we follow Jesus. People God not, is good. They're not interested in religion. No, they're they interested freedom. in freedom and truth and Jesus is the truth and the word of God. So the good news is mm. people are getting freedom as they see darkness. They also know there must be God and there they, must yeah, be light. They want free. Yes. And today, if you're struggling with anything or you'd like to receive Jesus as your savior, we would love to pray with you. So we have people right now that are waiting to pray with you, help take authority over anything that might be uh, oppressing you, hurting you, and also just call in the name of Jesus and you shall be saved. Hey, we're out of time, but we have a lot of great material at GaryCassie.com. And by the way, Drenda's new book, Fight Like Heaven, talks more about the culture. You might want to check that out at Drenda.com as well. But uh, GaryCassie.com, a lot of great material about winning in life, learning how to hear God's voice, learning how to follow the Spirit of God. It will help change your life and set your feet on a solid foundation. Yes. yes. We'll see you next time, same place, same time.